actually all the banks have targets of four dollars plus on our, on our stock. It's to become one of the biggest gold producers in Mongolia, uh, we, and we are on track um, to become that. Hi, I'm Veronica Van Wollen, and joining us today is President and CEO Bata Tumor Ochir, as well as Vice President Anil Varich from Step Gold. Step Gold is listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange under the ticker symbol STGO, and Step will also be listing soon on the Mongolian Stock Exchange as well as the OTC. Anil, Bata, thank you so much for joining us. How are you? I'm good. Thanks thank for having us, Veronica. It's exciting to be chatting with you because we're we're dealing with uh, a multitude of time zones here. Anil, I know you're on the East Coast representing investors on that part of the world. And Bata, you're actually on your site uh, in Mongolia. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Yes. I'm in UB, capital city of Mongolia. Yeah. Lamba. Wonderful. What a treat. Yeah. Um, so anyone who's not familiar with Step Gold, I'll give the investors a quick kind of rundown, and then I'll let you guys talk about the story in more detail. Um, so Step Gold is a Mongolian you could say a Mongolian success story. They have assets in Mongolia. They poured their first gold last year of 2020. There's a lot of exploration and development on the horizons and timeline, and we're generating a lot of cash flow right now. So I want to dive into all of that and the opportunity for investors for 2021 and beyond. Uh, before we do that, Anil, why don't you give us a quick overview of what Step Gold is in the story? Sure. So Step Gold today is, is Mongolia's premier precious metals company. We founded the company at the end of 2016 as a private company with the aspirations of becoming a mid-tier precious metals company focused on Mongolia. 2017, we purchased two assets that are in the company today, uh, one being our cornerstone flagship asset, which is the ATO project, which is now in commercial production. We bought that for 20 million US from Centera Gold in 2017. We listed the company in 2018 as the only main board mining IPO in 2018. And in 2020, we declared commercial production. So in under two years, we built our first mine and brought it online uh, in what could be uh, one of the toughest times in the world. Uh, so uh, that's Step Gold today. We're listed on the main board and uh, we're just getting started. That's really exciting. And for investors that may have missed that, you, you purchased the assets in 2018 and within two years, you now have a producing asset. Did I hear that correctly? That's correct. Very, very exciting. I want to talk a little bit more about Mongolia because you don't hear a lot of companies listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange that do have Mongolian assets. Uh, if I'm correct, Step is only one of four companies that are currently listed. Bata, maybe you can talk to us a little bit about uh, being in Mongolia and your strong relations there. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> so uh, about Mongolia, Mongolia is a country where the mining industry plays a vital role in the economy. Uh, we may say Mongolia is a mining country. Over 70% of all foreign direct, direct investment to Mongolia goes into the mining industry. And over 85% of all Mongolia's exports are all mineral resources. So the government is uh, very supportive to the industry and the, within the mining industry, is the main industry allowing to all the exports and investment into the Mongolia. So as for last year, it was a very challenging year for Mongolia and, and to, the, to the world because of this uh, COVID-19. And even though with this, uh, during this difficult time, we managed to transport, import required chemical regions during this pandemic lockdown with the support from the local government and authorities. And as for the company, comparing to last year, we believe we risked the significant risk factors related to permits, approvals to operate. And now the company is in production with a positive cash flow. And today the company employs about 250 people on site and 180 people directly employed by Step Corp. So <clears throat> a little bit history there. Uh, previously, the company chairman, Matty Wood, uh, built several successful mining companies in Mongolia, including Hunu Coal, coal company uh, listed on ASX, did an IPO for 20 million and sold for half a billion dollars in 18 months. So we're looking at a very fast track, uh, <clears throat> the similar, similar success story here with the step code right now. Yeah, yeah we're certainly an aggressive uh, company. Yeah. That, that's really impressive. So for my, for what I take from that, you have a very strong relationships with the Mongolian government. Um, Anil, is there anything else that you want to add to that? 
Yeah, I think Bata can highlight, uh, well, you know, just like uh, Hulu Coal, that was a Mongolian company uh, that was listed uh, on, the, on another exchange. Uh, you know, upon that sale, there was 300 employees, only three were expats, so all Mongolians. So it was a success story globally, but also most importantly in Mongolia. And that's that's what we're trying to replicate with STEP. Today, STEP, we have a obviously a Mongolian CEO and president, half our board are Mongolian. And like Bata mentioned, all that staff on site all are Mongolian except for two. So we're replicating that same success, except that we actually want to build a bigger company focused on the precious metal space. Yeah. And, and most importantly, I think, uh, and Bata can touch on this, is you know from the social responsible side, how we've run our company from day one. This is right from inception at the end of 2016. And Bata, you can highlight some of the things yeah. that we've there. Sure, go ahead. Yeah. So regarding the social responsibility, Step called signed the cooperation agreement with the local province before commencing any development with the ATO mine production and development. So the cooperation agreement allows all stakeholders to engage with the development of the mine. And <clears throat> the uh, company focuses and gives a lot of efforts to local education, provides scholarship programs to local community students. Plus, we purchase 100% all our dairy and meat products from the local communities and support uh, social and economic initiatives. So we may say if uh, investment into step code isn't just into the gold company, but it also supports the local communities. So when we started this uh, project two years ago, the number of students going to school and universities was only 68. Now it's increased to 185 students. Wow. So I think, it, uh, I think the company plays a really good role with the local communities over there. That's so very and, Yeah. And 70% of all our total workforce on site are also from the local area. So we are the only mining company operating over there and people are very happy with it. Yeah. I'm not surprised why you have such support from the uh, the local community there. So let's talk talk a little bit then about 2020. What happened in 2020? Obviously, we we mentioned the most significant news being the first gold pour. Uh, but let's highlight other key milestones from last year. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, well, we we started the year with the the, the key permit in place. So. The December 2019, we received the, the final permit to allow us to actually get to the gold, was the cyanide uh, transportation usage and storage permit. Uh, on the back of that, that's when we started procuring the chemicals to start leaching uh, in March. Uh, so besides production uh, starting, uh, most importantly, we brought production online with a 100% local team. Uh, as the government of Mongolia, uh, again, uh, being very proactive, uh, very strong move, moves they made earlier on during, during this pandemic, they closed the country. They restricted all travel. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that kept uh, all, all, all the, the country safe uh, and, and our staff safe and allowed us to still continue to operate in a safe mm -hmm. environment. So thankfully for, for, for their proactiveness uh, and, and tighter restrictions uh, in January of last year, it allowed us to continue to operate, which means we were allowed to drill. We we're allowed to procure chemicals and most importantly produce gold um so that's that that's a, that's a that's a major uh, accomplishment of course uh, being a producer and changing from developer to producer and now we have an expansion project behind that but going back to our, our last question the, the the support we're getting in country uh we, we shown it twice in 2020 so we started off january 2020 with a three million U.S. investment from the newly established sovereign fund in Mongolia. The first ever investment they made into a mining company was into Step Gold. So that just shows you the validation and the support we're getting at all levels in the country. Um, eight months later, we received, uh, uh, and Bata can touch on this Gold 2 program, but uh, a 10 and a half million U.S. Uh, call it a debt tranche for our for phase two expansion, which we'll get into later, also from sponsored by the Central Bank of Mongolia. So you have a government now that's giving us capital to continue to grow our operations. And so that's that's strong support you can see and, and uh, you can even call it political risk concerns, uh, having uh, the government also as a sponsor uh, within, the, within the company. That's very impressive. Bata, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, uh, I just remembered, uh, I think it was 2017, uh, when we were first attended as a private company to PDAC, uh, PDAC event in Canada. That was the same day when, that was in March 2017, when the Minister of Mongolia, uh, Minister of Mining Mongolia went to there and Minister of Trade of, from Canada announced the uh, Foreign Investment protection, Promotion and Protection Agreement uh, between Mongolia and Canada. And on the same day, the step called signed the cooperation agreement with the ministries regarding this uh, gold through program. 
So Gold 2 program is a gold initiated program which allows uh, supports the companies in the gold industry by accelerating permits and other approvals from the government side. And the companies selected in this gold 2 program must have more transparency and do more, more social responsibility works. So we were the first company selected in that program in 2017. And we made a pledge and promise to invest $20 million. And the next year, we did an IPO on the TSX. And so far, we're here. So government and we are both very happy. <laughs> the companies are very happy with this. Yeah. So that's that's a that's a great support we got in 2020 from the government. I think a few wow. times at the beginning and you know later on in the year after we 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 brought phase one production online. Uh, later on, after we declared commercial production in July of 2020, we, we uh, received a, a strategic investment from Eric Sprott, 15 million uh, Canadian investment at a price of 215. Um, uh, that, that was a great endorsement to get more eyeballs on the story. Great validation for our team, for the assets, and for the country. It was Eric's first Im- investment into Mongolia, uh, is our understanding. So it was a great achievement to bring him on, bring more eyeballs on the story, and uh, and get it, you know, get get his endorsement. Uh, you know, he is an institution, right? So it's just like getting a blue chip institution into the stock. And he obviously liked it for a variety of reasons. Was uh, obviously execution. We we did bring a a mine online uh, and generating free cash right out of the gate. Yeah. Like the upside through expiration, uh, and you like this the scalability opportunity. You know, Mongolia is home to world class assets. There's the the world class Oyotogoi uh, um, deposit and mine uh, run now by Rio Tinto. Uh, so it's relatively underexplored, and there's still lots of opportunities. So um, that's been a, been a big big year for us. It's been a really big year and I want to get into what 2021 has in store because I'm sure there's a lot of things investors can look forward to. What I see here is you clearly have a very strong track record of saying you're going to do something and then delivering on it. And I think what investors are going to be looking forward to right now is those Q3 financials because we'll have the official numbers from the production uh, cash flow from last year, from 2020. So I know we can't speak to numbers specifically, but maybe we can talk a little bit about um, what uh, the strong cash flows and what we kind of anticipate those to look like. Yeah, Yeah, sure. Well, those are important. Uh, You know, we're still in startup ramp up mode. You know, we started, we commenced production in Q2 2020. Uh, That was our first quarter of production uh, while still in a startup ramp up while in COVID. And we produced over 15,000 ounces in Q2 of 2020, producing um, uh, over uh, 10 million million US of EBITDA. We sold 11,000 ounces that quarter. Uh, so it's a significant amount of, of cash that actually hits the bottom line here. Uh, um, so we're generating free cash flow out of the gate. Our second quarter of production, we also generated about 11,000 ounces of production in, in similar 9, 10 million US of EBITDA. And so you're going to see similar type of numbers going forward. Uh, so for 2021, I think we're on track to generate about 40 million US of EBITDA on the back of uh, 50 to 60,000 ounces of production over wow. the next 12 months. So that's a, that's a robust uh, uh, you know, project. And that's only our starter project, just to, just to note. Uh, you know, this is only funding our expansion to go from 50 to 60,000 ounces to 150,000 ounces, which we're already working on as part of our 2021 catalyst is a feasibility study. Study, revised feasibility study, and they'll come out at the end of Q2. In between now and Q2, we'll have a resource update in February, um, which will update which will update uh, all three ATO deposits and, and put a maiden resource on a new discovery called Munk, uh, which means silver Mongolian, which is now part of our phase two expansion on mm. the same mining license and footprint. So that's a very exciting growth that we have right around the corner. It's a fully permitted expansion project where we've done all the heavy lifting over the last couple of years through permitting, through building the camp, the civils, the infrastructure, everything's in place. It's just a seamless expansion. So uh, now our, our, in a couple of years, our, 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 our profitability will go from, you know, 25, 30 million US of free cash flow to, you know, two or three times that mm-hmm. uh, with, without having to, to hopefully raise any, even any equity because we're generating our own cash flow. And alongside debt, we get to self-fund our expansion and yeah. that's not counting any other expiration upside. So it's a pretty uh, robust new year. This is now, now we get to, like Bata said, to be aggressive. We built our first mine, we've executed, we generate our own cash flow to control our own destiny. And uh, it's going to be very exciting to, to be able to bring that second mine online over the next couple of years while we're still generating free cash flow from the phase one yeah. and getting back to the expiration. I, w- I was going to emphasize that for investors, right? Because you are generating cash flow, you can use that to redeploy into exploration and you don't have to go back to the market that often to raise capital, if at all. 
Um, so what I'm hearing for 2021, expanding more drilling, um, looking to, to put something into production quite soon. Bata, do you want to elaborate on that and add anything else that investors can expect for from STEP for 2021? Yeah, and the whole ATL project consists of consists from phase one and two. So phase one we have commenced. We are already in production producing from the oxide zones. And now that we are targeting to commence the phase two, which is uh, fresh rock. Yeah. So for 2021, the company will continue its production to meet annual 60,000 ounces of gold target. And besides that, the company will commence phase two of the ATL project, which upon completion in two years, we will target to reach 150,000 ounces per year. So the Mongolian technical feasibility reports are all of the approved and in place. We received initial permits to build the second CIL plant and other facilities. So we are very excited to commence and further develop the mine. And wow. as also Anil can add, uh, we're not uh, looking to uh, raise money through equity. We're looking at the project debt, uh, debt and company can finance 30% and we're looking to raise the rest 70% through the project debt. Okay. And we think it's very possible there. Yeah. Yeah, so that would the, be my follow-up question. I was curious how much capital would be required to develop the next asset here. Can we speak yep. to that a little bit? Yep, yep, roughly. Uh, rough numbers. We don't have the exact yeah. numbers. That's why we're revising the feasibility by adding a new deposit and doing some additional work. And because we took a phase approach, take, building phase one and then phase two. So phase two expansion, by the end of June, I think we'll, we'll have a number. It should be between roughly 100 to 125 million U.S. CapEx. Uh, today, we have thirty, just about 35 million U.S. on the balance sheet. Uh, that will continue to grow from our cash flow, the oxides, phase one mine. So by the time we get to uh, the end of June, uh, we'll have our debt lined up and we'll already have our equity component, which is our cash on hand and the cash flow over the next six months. In addition, we'll have cash flow for the next 18 months while we're expanding. So wow. we have the luxury of, uh, of a, a producing mine that can go on for you know three to four years from today, even though we only plan to run it for two years. But if something did take longer or you need more capital, you have your own producing asset to actually fund the gap or any delay or that. So it's a, it's a nice position to be in that we were not in during phase one. Um, so, that, yeah, it's roughly about that's the capex. And, and we, we're, we have the ability to self-fund, which is a great position to be in and not have to, to worry about the markets. It doesn't mean that we'll never raise equity, but it will never be at, it won't be at these levels. Yeah. So we have the ability to rate, uh, and no one will care if you raise money at significantly higher uh, levels uh, at, at, for strategic uh, purposes. Um, so that's the phase two. Yeah. Okay. No, that makes sense. And, you know, I want us to talk about the valuation and market cap because uh, when, when we were chatting offline, you mentioned to me that you feel it's still quite undervalued compared to its peers. Um, so talk to us. Why? Why do you feel it's still undervalued? Sure. Well, we listed at $2.00. Uh, two and a half years ago, when gold was $1,250, when we hadn't moved a rock and we had permitting, finance, building risk. Uh, two and a half years later, we've done all that. We're producing our own cash flow. Uh, gold has gone up significantly. Uh, so you have, uh, you can, you can safely say that we're more valuable today than we were. And we're only, you know, barely 20%, 25% higher than that listing price of $2. So no, so investors haven't missed the boat. Uh, second, um, you're not giving any value today for that phase two we talk about, or the project we haven't even spoken about, which is our, our very exciting large expiration license. So it's 14,400 hectares in the Southwest of the country, uh, where uh, another company called their Dean has had tremendous success in the last few years. And they've drilled uh, all around us and they have about a million ounces. And we have a, a license right in the middle that we're going to start drilling in March. So that's just in a couple of months from now, we have to start drilling there for the first time ever. So uh, as you know, expiration and, and new expiration could have some significant uh, market cap. Yeah. yeah, big upside. So uh, the best part is we get to fund that ourselves. So it's not like you have a good, some good drill results and you have to go back to the market. We have our own self-funding growth and expert and through expansion and the expiration program. So uh, adding all those together, um, you know, like I mentioned on, tw on a 12 month basis, you're generating next 12 months, 40 million US of EBITDA on our enterprise, that's US dollars. And our enterprise value is about hundred million US today, or just over uh, on enterprise best. So uh, I think, I think investors can do the do the rough math there in terms of where, where, where peers trade and where we are. And uh, there's a significant upside, I'd say, and the re-rate hasn't happened yet. But uh, do you want to add anything to that for why investors should um, understand how a step is undervalued in, in your opinion? 
Yeah, it's uh, <clears throat> uh, mostly mentioned by Anil. And plus, on top of that, and the company is assessing additional more assets on almost like a weekly basis. And there is some mo much more opportunities. Uh, we haven't uh, announced the, there is a discovery called Moong, which is in the, in the ATO project region. We haven't uh, announced any resource estimates or reserves. So that's going to be uh, adding uh, valuation on the ATO project. And the phase two will be interesting, plus this, uh, the project of UK, the Anil mentioned, yeah. So uh, I think uh, now we are in a, well, the company is in a position where the risk, the major, major risks. So we had a lot of risks compared to last, last year. We had a lot of risks. So now we're in a positive cash flow. So it's a very secure and exciting time to invest right now, yeah. No, I like that. And I think you, you've kind of summarized it already, right? I want I want to end off with saying why investors should invest in Step Gold today uh, yep. if they're looking at it. Maybe you can just add a little bit of those takeaway points for our audience today. Sure. Um, why today? Well, I guess we have uh, quite a lot of new slow and catalysts in, in, in short order. Uh, uh, as I mentioned, the rebate hasn't happened yet. We have more bank coverage that's been picked up the long, last year and, and will continue to grow, which will help and get more eyeballs in the story. Uh, actually, all the banks have targets of $4 plus on our, on our stock. Okay. Well, uh, Stifle GMP, I think, picked us as their top pick for this Q1 or one of the top picks out of the producer space. Um, we have a resource update in February. We have expiration restart uh, or, or maiden expiration drilling at the UK project. So never drilled license. We get to start drilling there. So that's quite exciting. Uh, and then followed by further production cash flow and, and, and uh, the, the biggest thing, I, I think, is that feasibility study, giving us the final number of how much it's going to cost, what's our production cost going to look like, which we think will be quite competitive and not to, to do similar to today's costs, uh, which are just around $700 US uh, all in. Um, uh, that, that's quite a lot, I think, uh, you know, barring you know, M&A or anything else. Yeah, yeah. I feel like we've just scratched the surface here, and I'm sure investors will, will want to have a lot of follow-up questions to our conversation here today. Just as we wrap things up, any kind of final words, Bata, Anil, anything else you want to leave investors with? Uh, I'll, uh, the company is also planning to list on Mongolian Stock Exchange in the first quarter this year. And the whole, the whole company's goal is to become one of the biggest gold producers in Mongolia. Uh, we, and we are on track um, to become that. And as part of this goal, the management decided to do a list, the Mongolian Stock Exchange, to build a bigger investor base in Mongolia and give our Mongolian shareholders an easy access to invest. The plan is not about raising significant capital, but more about increasing the number of Mongolian shareholders and to have a more substantial presence here in Mongolia. And the two-thirds of all investment and money raised over the last 12 months actually came from Mongolia. So we are very proud and happy to have a great, uh, generous support from the Mongolian investors and also international sh shareholders. Yeah. I love that. Gents, thank you so much for joining us here today. Uh, it was really exciting speaking with you. Again, Step Gold listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange under the ticker symbol STGO, soon to be listed on the Mongolian Exchange as well as the OTC. We have Anil Varic, Vice President, and Bata Tumor Ochir, President and CEO. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us today. Thank you very much for having us.